The last few weeks, Dan Larimer has been talking a lot about UBI, universal basic income. And he's even said he's writing a book about UBI. The question is, when it comes to EOS, a blockchain that's purpose is to provide the infrastructure for running decentralized apps. What does EOS have to do with universal basic income? Welcome to EOS Weekly, your number one source of EOS news. Today is Wednesday, September 5th, and the title of this week's episode is ByteMaster's Focus is UBI. So let's get into this week's updates, starting with headlines. Over the past few weeks, Dan Larimer has been quite vocal in the EOS Telegram chats, and he's been laser-focused on a single topic, and that topic is Universal Basic Income, or UBI. The basic premise behind UBI is that all people would receive a certain minimal salary just for existing. The goal of UBI is to keep all people above the poverty line through this basic income. Dan Larimer is so passionate about this that he just announced he's writing a book on the UBI topic. Now, this is not some whimsical interest that Dan recently got into and that he'll likely tire out of just as quickly. As EOS Union pointed out on Twitter, Dan wrote a blog post on UBI way back on January 26th of 2015. So he's had this on his mind for some time now. The thing about UBI is you can't implement it through software unless you have so, unless you have some way of uniquely identifying human beings through that software. Otherwise, people would create multiple accounts and collect multiple UBI payouts, right? So one of the biggest hurdles in implementing a UBI solution would be to ensure every human being can create a maximum of one account. But how do you do this? Dan is claiming that he's solved this unique person technical hurdle, which if he in fact has solved it, would be another massive accomplishment for the Byte Master. Companies and governments have been trying all sorts of methods to solve this problem and so far have failed, unless they're willing to be ultra obtrusive in terms of gathering and using biometric data. And it's pretty clear that the big announcement that Dan and Block One are making at the London Hackathon in a few weeks is related to this UBI topic and the solution to unique identification. And Dan is doing a great job of building up the hype machine by leaving little hints and clues in the EOS Telegram chats as to how he has solved this. The question is, what does UBI have to do with EOS? What does UBI have to do with building decentralized applications? We'll try to give an answer to this, but first let's take a look at some of the clues Dan has left us. He's given us enough hints and clues in the Telegram chats that we think we can make an educated guess as to what his solution might look like. So, the first hint is this. All that will be stored on the blockchain is your name and photo. Assuming you want to get some of this universal basic income, you'd need to provide your name and photo. But from Dan's response, it sounds like they won't be storing any other biometric data on the blockchain. Things like fingerprints, DNA samples, retina scan data, none of this will be stored on the blockchain. But at a separate time, he does say that biometrics do play a small factor. Most likely, since he's already saying that your facial picture is stored on the chain, that facial picture is the biometric data that he's talking about here. And being that Dan is a hardcore libertarian, it'd be surprising if he asked for much more than that facial picture in terms of biometric data. Moving on in this response here, Dan Larimer is saying he's not concerned about AI-generated faces. And finally, in response to all the ways someone might try to prove a unique identity, but all of which are likely beatable, Dan Larimer responds with a single word, collaborative. Collaborative. What does he mean by collaborative? This might just be our biggest clue that he's provided so far. Now, we all know Block One is working on a social networking dApp of some kind, a new version of Steemit. If Dan's talking about a collaborative way of uniquely identifying human beings, is it reasonable to assume that the social networking dApp that they are currently building is playing a role in this? For example, could he be planning some sort of social network where people are required to occasionally upload new photos of themselves, which they'll likely already naturally do in a social network, And then perhaps people would earn tokens for tagging people with whom they are connected in in those other photos. And by tagging, we just mean just like in Facebook, where you add 
a name to the face in a photo. When he says it'll be collaborative, could it be something along these lines? It could be, but there would have to be more to it than that. Otherwise, a group of people cons conspiring together would still easily be able to invent a new person out of thin air. They, ju they just all need to agree on the name and appearance of that person and Photoshop them into different pictures and, and then tag them and make it look like that person's alive. But what could that secret sauce be within a, so within a social network that would prevent people from conjuring up these fake people? It's, it's likely not overly complicated because we believe Dan Larimer was referring to this unique identity solution when, when he said it was so simple and powerful, I'm surprised no one else has done anything like it. So let's not overthink it. It's something simple. Does anybody have ideas? Because we haven't figured this out yet. Now, going into universal basic income, Dan says there's a continual process people would have to go through, a low burden process of some kind to provide this continuous proof of life. It's possible that these two things are one and the same, that the collaborative aspect that he was talking about with regards to unique identity might also be the same exact task that people will have to do for proof of life for the UBI. Namely, in our prediction, uh, something like uploading new photos and tagging themselves and others in those photos. Now, being that unique identification and universal basic income go hand in hand, and with our speculation that unique identification is part of the Steemit 2.0 social networking dApp, the next thing to consider here is whether universal basic income will also be part of the social networking dApp. As of today, it seems most people are assuming unique identification as well as UBI will somehow be in the base protocol layer down here, similar to how Rex is down here in the base protocol. But based on this single word collaborative and the fact that UBI has a technical dependency on unique identification, we are making the leap that both of these will be in the social networking dApp, not in the EOS base protocol layer. It would look something like this. I'm, let's say that I'm going to create an account in the new Block One social networking dApp. Every once in a while, I need to prove I'm alive by uploading a new photo of myself. And I also need to tag people I'm connected to in my photos and theirs as a part of proving I'm alive and also proving that they are who they say they are. AI could also potentially help with the, uh, the tagging aspect of this. And then there's some sort of secret sauce that is going to prevent me from inventing fake people in this social network because everyone in here is unique with one and only one account. And we all receive UBI just for uploading new photos and potentially earning more tokens for tagging people's names in those photos, right? So the only missing piece is that secret sauce. How are they making it foolproof that you won't be able to make up a fake person? We haven't figured this part out yet. But going back to the original question of what does UBI have to do with EOS? The answer is it doesn't really but it could be a great incentive to get mass adoption on the new social networking dApp. And this social networking dApp could then provide an API for all of the other dApps to access in order to authenticate users. If UBI gets adoption levels going through the roof the way that you would imagine it would, putting an authentication API on it could make this social networking dApp the identity system to kill all identity systems. Sort of scary from an Orwellian perspective, but it's a good thing we know that the Byte Master has altruistic intentions here. Or who knows? Maybe our assumptions here are way off and we're taking all our viewers here down the wrong path. What do you think? Are we in the right vicinity? Please leave your comments below with your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Moving on to speed round. This is a new segment where we take you on a very quick tour through all the major EOS news announcements and events starting with the Ledger Nano S. This past week's Cypherglass, one of the top 21 block producers, announced that the Ledger Nano S is going to support EOS. Cypherglass put out a $100,000 bounty of their own money to get EOS supported on this hardware wallet. Big thanks to Cypherglass for making this happen. Very cool. The EOS Alliance continues with their 12-week series on the Constitution. We are currently in the three week, uh, or, or in week three, where the Alliance is having workshops focused on design principles and core beliefs of the Constitution. Warbly is a sister chain of the EOS mainnet that is geared towards financial services. This past week, several block producers have announced partnerships with Warbly 
including EOS New York, EOS Dublin, and EOS Sphere. You can see the full list of BPs that have partnered with Warbly in the Warbly white paper. Um, the link is in, in the show notes below. An EOS desktop was announced a few days ago on Reddit, which enables you to run dApps directly on your desktop. This is powered by Scatter, and this first version will run on Macs. In related news, Nathan James of Scatter wrote an excellent blog post making the case for why native dApps uh, will be a huge step forward for blockchains, Scatter Mobile and Scatter Desktop being the first ways to do this. And of course, we know the London Hackathon is coming in a few weeks on September 22nd and 23rd. And soon after that, on October 10th and 11th, EOS Rise is a dApp development workshop being held in Denver. Uh, this workshop series is sponsored by EOS Tribe and OCI Partner. And then in November, November 10th and 11th, we have the Hackathon in San Francisco. And soon after that, on November 16th, the EOS Block Producer Summit in Norway, which is part of the crypto finance annual event hosted by Bitspace. And then coming in the new year on January 21st through the 25th, we have EOS DevCon in Tampa, Florida, which is a DAP and EOS developer focused event. And that brings us to our featured EOS project of the week. Currently, it's not very easy to purchase EOS for the average person. If someone who's never been in crypto before heard about EOS and wanted to get involved, it's not the most straightforward process in terms of selecting and setting up a wallet and then converting your fiat paper money into EOS. About a month ago, Coinbase released their roadmap of different cryptos they are planning to support in the near future. And many of us were surprised and disappointed to see that EOS was not on that list. But we don't want to be reliant on companies like Coinbase to provide the on-ramp for the masses who are about to come to EOS. We want to have our own on-ramp because having a direct fiat to EOS mechanism in place is a huge milestone we need to reach before we'll get mass adoption. And that's why we are featuring Gamma by Warbly as this week's EOS project of the week. Gamma is a global fiat digital asset and currency financial institution. Referred to in short as Gamma Bank, this is going to be one of the first projects built on top of the Warbly blockchain, which is an EOS blockchain. Warbly has been getting a lot of attention lately. So far, or so for anybody who isn't familiar with Warbly, it is a friendly fork of EOSIO focused on the financial industry. It will be a sister chain running on a separate set of block producers than the EOS mainnet, although some of the BPs will overlap with the mainnet BPs, such as EOS New York. The block producers are not elected in Warbly, they are appointed. So Warbly is centralized in that way. Warbly also has some requirements for AML, which is anti-money laundering, and KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer. But this is necessary to integrate with the highly regulated financial world. And having Warbly as an option will take pressure off the EOS mainnet to provide AML and KYC. We'll have plenty more to say about Warbly in future episodes, but the focus today is their Gamma Bank project, because this will likely be the first fiat to EOS on-ramp, the first on-ramp where people can convert their normal paper currency into directly into EOS, the way that they can on Coinbase today, going directly into Bitcoin or Ethereum. So this will likely be the first in the EOS, ecos in the EOS ecosystem where we'll have our, basically our own private implementation of Coinbase. According to the roadmap on the Warbly website, uh, they will be building the MVP of the Gamma Bank in Q4 of 2018, so coming up here. And then in 2019, they will complete Gamma, ba Gamma Bank and launch it. Warbly does have an airdrop planned for September 14th, just a little over a week away. You do need to register your email on their website to participate. It's at warbly.io. The link is in the show notes below. Congratulations to Warbly and their Gamma Bank for being featured this week's EOS Project of the Week. If you would like to nominate a great EOS project to be recognized here, please ping us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at EOS Weekly. That's it for this week's episode of EOS Weekly. Please like and subscribe if you found this content informative and you want to continue to stay current on EOS as this revolution unfolds. Thanks, and we'll see you next week right here on EOS Weekly.